It's Ken Bergen here from Foodie Coaches, another one of our regular Q&A sessions. And uh, last time, as you remember, we talked about chef recruitment, and that video is now up on our YouTube channel with lots of really interesting insights there. And another issue that comes up, of course, all the time, wages and paying people and all the legalities and intricacies of that and the bookkeeping side and the tax side and all the rest. So great to have Kylie Denning along who's an accountant with FC Accounting Co. They work with our Foodie Coaches members, and she says she doesn't like payroll, but she certainly knows a way around it pretty well. And if you've got questions about this topic, please drop them in the comments below the uh, screen. Okay, Kylie. So why don't we just talk about maybe the last 12 months, 18 months, when the tax department has pushed through a lot more regulation and a lot of changes, which has maybe made a lot more people take something which is was seen as just a bit of a bookkeeping exercise and take it more seriously and get more organised and get more digital. But what are some of those changes we should be aware of? So we've had the implementation of STP, single touch payroll, which ultimately has given the ATO full transparency on our payroll in real time or ultimately as soon as you lodge your STP with the ATO. I guess a lot of people probably don't really think about what that means for them, but what it really means is that the ATO is able to tell if you've paid your super on time, your PAYG before you lodge your BAS. There's just an awful lot of transparency around payroll now. I guess the biggest change from that is that the ATO are straight onto you if you haven't done things on time now. They know that you've got commitments because you've lodged them through STP. Oh, and- okay, so even delays in paying the super and all those sorts of things, you get the get the letter in the, or the email, is it, or the phone 100%. call? Or- it's a letter, yes. It's a yeah. letter. Um, okay. And, and they send them out quite frequently now. Even if you've, uh-huh. paid it, you've paid it a few days late, they'll still catch up with you. Mm. Would you say that's the thing that's been pushing people to get more organised with payroll processing? Oh, I don't know if that's pushing people. I think that this is just starting to really come out now that the STP is up and running. It is working well from the ATO's point of view. So now they have started to get their processes into place around super being paid on time. As soon as that, I guess, that deadline isn't met, the letter comes in the mail. And I think that's them preparing for getting us to do our super weekly in the future. This is their way of transitioning us into that. We've got bookkeeping, we've got point of sale, we've got roster software, we've got payroll systems. Talk us through how all these things are now more integrated or they're still quite separate. It feels to me like some of the rostering companies are now taking over payroll as well and want you to have it all under their Mm. one umbrella. Yeah, I think with the rostering, it's definitely beneficial to have it in your payroll. I know a lot of people don't enjoy electronic rostering, but I think having the ability to see what your roster is worth when you roster and then be able to transition that directly into your payroll with the click of a button has a lot of efficiencies. So definitely having your rostering and your payroll in one system. There's Zero and MYOB have their own systems too, don't they? Or They all have their own internal systems. The downside to those are that they don't have a rostering function. So when you're moving to an external app, like a deputy or something like that does rostering, it also does a timesheet, which pushes into zero and then ultimately creates most of the payroll for you. Kelly's just dropped a comment there. She's trolling viability.io, which is a system that's been around in the background for a fair few years. There's quite a lot of rostering Mm. programs around now. I think that making your non-negotiable lists of what you need out of your software and then shopping around is definitely the way to go. The popular ones like Deputy and Tanda and Employment Hero are going to cost you upwards of $9 per employee a month and there's definitely some smaller guys that do it for cheaper. There's always one function that you don't. For instance, Foundu is popular, but it doesn't integrate into zero entry. So those types of things are what you really need to consider. There's a new one, a new roster system that a few people have picked up, which is $20 a month called You Are Here. I don't know if you've had experience with that. I haven't had hands-on experience with it, but I have had a few people talk about it. So I think the industry is definitely getting a shake-up with pauses and with the payroll systems. Mm. I think charging 10 bucks an employee now and offering no customer service is going to be short-lived. Um, we definitely have a few of the popular 
platforms that have really great functionality, but very little support. And when something goes wrong, they need help. If they can't get Mm. that help, they're going to jump. What sort of common mistakes people have made and maybe some things that people could avoid if they were a bit more thoughtful? Yeah. I think a lot of the times people don't put enough emphasis on paying their super weekly. I think especially if you're in an auto super situation, getting your super done weekly is great. I think leaving it till the end of the quarter is generally going to leave you wondering where the crap you're going to find your money from for that. The other thing is people using software like a deputy or an employment hero that reads the award. A lot of the times people disregard some of the award uh, stipulations around they just use the bit they like do they <laughs> use the bit they like i think in this day and age staff are on the lookout to make sure their super is being paid they're mm. on the lookout for their shift allowances because they're in the industry and they know what the normal is so i really think now if you're looking to attract and keep staff you really need to stick to the award and understand it don't just think that you're going to get away with something. Mm. Uh, staff are certainly much more aware of awards and two clicks on the, their phone. They can find out what exactly they should be paid on Saturday. Um, yep. How aware are staff of super and particularly their super balance and the performance of their super front? When I first started out, I couldn't have told you if I had a super fund where it was or how to check a balance. But now that they have their balance available on MyGov and they, when they log into the, their MyGov, they can simply see their balance. They can see transactions. I think that now the visibility around that is a lot greater. And would you say that this has followed through from the lack of cash too? Because cash or part cash and all those things were just part of the scene, wasn't it, with a lot of hospitality wage yeah. paying? Look, I actually think this is the government's way of trying to control the pension. They want you to have super so they don't have to pay for you later on. Vasilios has got a comment here. He's found deputy sometimes alters employee pay rates week to week and he has to double check them. Doesn't trust it 100%. Wondering Vass, if for you you've come across that. Yeah, Vas, I would have to say that possibly because either the award's not set up right or the base rate's not been applied because ultimately it, it follows the award straight away it'll only be if they're working a split shift or there's some type of before or after hours allowance uh-huh. that's kicked in that it'll mess with the rates but i think once you get for instance deputy set up well deputy is great but not set up correctly and it'll take you more time than it's worth when people have mistakes with setup what are the things they often take they a often shortcut don't... or don't do properly So a lot of these programs now have an onboarding section. So you'll onboard your staff through the HR component of the payroll system Mm -hmm. so that then the information feeds into the payroll side. That's not done right. That causes problems. Like they don't know if they're casual. They don't know if they're part-time. They fill out their form wrong. It doesn't get fixed. They're missing their super details. So that should be, and that if you ask the staff to choose one they wouldn't know but you, that's something you need to correct before you finalize the data yeah, and then once that's done they need a base rate their award needs to be correct there's a few steps in there to getting it right daniel's got a comment there he likes tanda good for award inter- integration i think we can talk about brands here um people, the, people, we talked about deputy employment hero tanda's what come version up, someone... of um, tanda are you using daniel so daniel you might like to Add a little bit more information in mm. there as well. I, what is there a whole new iteration, is there? There is. So Tanda is probably Deputy's biggest competitor in a way mm-hmm. because they're quite similar in their style, but they have now moved to a more of a employment hero style where their payroll function is outside of zero. You actually complete the, the payroll in Tanda. So they're looking to gear up a little bit and bring a bit more to the table. He said um, it's just the latest version he's using and also using the onboarding as well. So that's pretty new. New. It's not long out of a beta. I've had some issues with integrations and a few other things, but that version of Tanda, they're definitely trying to be the leader in that in that mm. um, area. One, one thing I, li- I I like these companies are competing on features. They don't seem to be f- competing on service as much, though. It, it blows me away. I look at Restoke. I can ask anyone at Restoke a question, and I'll get an answer. Can't say that for many other platforms 
So I wanted to ask you a bit more about these add-ons and Daniel's mentioned about the onboarding. He's got the contract, digital contract signing as well. And I know they have like document storage and record storage, applications, list of applicants to refer to. What are you seeing there? From the HR point of view, I think they're all quite similar, to be honest. I think that whilst I, I don't have anything against Tanda, once the information's been entered, you can't always edit it. So if someone does something wrong in their onboarding, can't change that. So I'm not a giant fan of not being in control of the employee's but they all are quite similar in that regard. They all do the OHS, employment, TFN, all that sort of stuff. Sam's brought a good point up here. And I, I've heard of this. It, the deputy is now charging an extra $250 a month for deputy HR, which is yep. the onboarding. And that was pulled out of the base product, which mm-hmm. I've heard of people say, oh, I'm not using it anymore. We're going back to paper. I think you we need to manually. work out where your time is best spent. If you've got an efficient paper system, Sure, but the manual transaction of having to find that employee, hand them some paper, they go away, they fill it out, they bring it back, you scan it back in. Another option, you could do a Google form, but storing bank details and TFNs is risky business. It needs to be kept secure. So in a program where there's a 2FA authentication and a level of protection, I think it's smart. And I think the digital signature and stuff is brilliant. You're definitely saving time there. There's some interesting comments coming up here. Matt's talking about using Zapier and Google Forms to get information into Deputy, but the security issue, what's your thoughts on that, Kylie? Not great. Matthew's asking, is 2FA being used for Google Drive and Xero? Xero, definitely, and our Google Drive, yes, but your Google Drive permissions are varied depending on how you set your Google Drive. Dan's made a, a good point. The digital's the only way for just we just got new operating costs and we've got to find the money from somewhere well, else. Yeah. Like I agree, find what you're good at. If you think you're good at HR and you want to spend time doing it, then sure. But I know around here we're paperless. We don't want to store anything. We don't want to have to go and scan something. Mm-hmm. We're trying to keep everything as compact and as efficient as possible. Yeah. What about uh, transferring from one system or another? I know some point of sale systems make it really difficult to export your history and your PLU set up and things like that, and you just can't do it. If I wanted to change from one payroll system to another, what's your experience with the ease of that? Look, at the moment, there's places like Loaded that are offering to do it for you. Employment Heroes, we generally set those up manually ourselves. There is a way to import data into them to speed up the process somewhat, but the business settings still need to be done manually. Do you want to pay your PAYG directly to ATO every week? Do you want to pay your super? Do you want your pay run to approve automatically? Do you want the pay slips to send automatically? Hmm. That sort of stuff still has to be set up manually, but you can get some efficiencies with the importation of like employee names and addresses. Yeah, okay. Doesn't sound like a huge amount, does it? So what are the skills that are needed? What is it a your partner is going to do it at home because they're already doing the zero and everything like that? Or is it really better to get a professional to do this? Or what are the extra skills I need? Because if you start making regular mistakes, it's expensive to unpick all that. I've listened to enough of good classes at retreat to know that you need to find your genius. If you love payroll and you're good at it, then by all means. But mm-hmm kind of subject that you need to understand and you need to know your award and you need to understand if you're doing things right or wrong because doing things wrong will definitely cost you money in the long run. Mm. Don't be filled into thinking that everyone that does payrolls knows what they're doing to start with. What are some other mistakes that you see people make, even if they're doing their payroll fairly well, but mistakes Mm. or shortcuts or maybe things are not being checked that should be checked? Any other kind of warnings that you have for people? Yeah, uh, super for under 18s is a big one. I find a lot of people pay super to under 18s. And sometimes you do have to pay super to under 18s, but the majority of the time you don't have to. So if you've got juniors doing casual shifts, then don't pay them super. It's not required. By all mm-hmm. means, if you want to go for it, but if you're looking to save yourself 11%, that's one of the biggest ones, understanding when to pay super. What other mistakes are you seeing people make? Or I find that a lot of the times people aren't using an ABA file to transfer their funds. So what they transfer out of the bank and what they accrue in their payroll system are often two different things. So understanding if your payroll reconciles is 
something I don't see people do a lot. It should be done every week or like after the payroll's done or before the payroll's done. I would add a minimum to when the BAS is lodged so that you know what you're lodging on the BAS is accurate at a minimum. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. What are some other checklists when I'm looking at, say, one system against another that I should be using to decide? So we are currently looking for software internally at the moment. And what Andrew asked me to do was to get my list of non-negotiables, what I wanted, what I needed, make a list of everything I wanted and then break it down into non-negotiables and then go through and make a list, pros and cons. Does it do what you want it to do? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, are you willing to give that up and work? work backwards like that. I think tracking the award is crucial in this day and age, unless you want to be sitting around thinking about if a shift allowance is appropriate or not, Mm -hmm. get something that follows the award. They worked after six o'clock and they finished after midnight. They started before six. So if the award goes up on one July or whatever random date they decide, you can click a button and update all your 15 pay rates rather than having to go in there and do it manually. Mm -hmm. Are a lot of systems not doing that kind of automatic updating? Deputy does it in a funny way in that you can select the award, but you've got to tell it the base rate, Mm. whereas Employment Bureau follows the award a little bit more closely. Tanda follows the award now as well. I'm sure some of the others do as well, but Mm -hmm. those are the most popular ones, yeah. Okay. Daniel's put in here that Tanda does update the award automatically, even updates... Mid-pay cycle, if an employee changes age. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I really mean it when I say Tand is coming for that title of best payroll software. Best, they mm. are really upping Nothing. the ante. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One bit of low-hanging fruit, you'd say, for people to make their payroll processing a bit simpler, a bit less tedious, have fewer mistakes. I would say at software so that you understand the cost of your roster in advance and and make sure that feeds into your payroll so mm-hmm. that you're clicking a button to get from your roster to your payroll. So the, your- the integration thing is absolutely important. Doing a roster is not super quick, so you don't yeah. want to be doing that twice, fitting into a roster and then fitting it into a payroll system. Yep. A spreadsheet is free, but your time to go and enter it for the second time into your payroll software is not. Mm. Yep. Thanks so much, uh, Kylie, for you, all your wisdom and insight. And I know you don't love payroll, but I uh, hope uh, we've given some people some clues to make the process simpler. And sometimes you need to pay someone professional to set it up properly or keep their eye on it a bit more yep. closely. Put the comments in the comments under this video. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kylie. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm.